Welcome to the Designated Drinker Show, the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. I am your host, Louise Salas, and with me is a very talented friend, our guest barkeep, the unicorn himself, Dwayne Zvesto. I thought I was Gina. <laughs> I think you're having an identity my, crisis. I identify as Gina. I'm Gina. Okay. Then refer to me as Gina. I will refer to you as Gina from now on. I wonder how Gina would feel about that. Who? Yeah. <laughs> We're just happy to have you. So there is a uh, Swahili proverb that I would like to share with you. It states, unity is strength, division is weakness. It seems like such a simple, simple thing, but it's funny how we only apply it when it really applies to us. And I did that I in really air I really wish that you had said it in Swahili. I was looking forward to that. No, you don't want me to try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been terrible. <laughs> we shall overcome. Well, well, wow, you went you went really deep on that. We shall So again, this is a simple concept and actually it's proven and it, it, it's not just a thought, it's not just, you know, airy fairy. It's actually proven in um, both science and nature. Um, so let's take bronze for example. Do you know that bronze is made up of two rather weak metals, copper and tin? So individually, those two metals, you could actually just bend them with your hands. They're very malleable, very, very weak. But when they're combined, they, may, they form bronze, which actually is one of the strongest metals. It's actually stronger than wrought iron. Interesting, see? I didn't know that. Unity, unity, strength in numbers. Um, and then let's go into um, nature, hydrogen gas. Not the kind that you blow your wife out of the bed with, but hydrogen gas. That would be methane. <laughs> um, so it's incredibly flammable and very explosive. And when it's combined with oxygen, which is also a combustible, they form water. I can put out fire with that. There you go. So it's a substance that actually puts out water, and we all know it cools the earth. So you're, I, you know, I try to put things in perspective so I can understand. So what you're saying, it's like ebony and ivory. <laughs> yes. Fit together in perfect harmony. Side by side on my piano. <laughs> the keyboard. Oh yes. Lord, why don't we? Oh, <laughs> by far more dramatic than myself, which is very odd. <laughs> so, all this silliness about unity and strength. Oddly enough, is going to bring me to today's designated drinker. And it all makes sense. Please help me, Ryan. Please help me dig out of this hole. He's the executive director of Capital Pride DC. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here with your little raspy voice. It sounds all sexy, though. It's good, It's good, like, podcast voice. <laughs> <laughs> it is allergy season. It is. It is. Tis the season. <laughs> Hello, spring. Um, See, there was a little song, Fling. tiny. <laughs> so um, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about yourself, of course, and all of uh, what you do with Capital Pride. But I'd like to know, like, all beyond, we all know about parades. We all know about the events that happen, um, or I would hope to think we all know and support. Tell us about what you do all the other days of the year. What else does that include, being the executive director? Wait, are you going to ask him about his workout split? Because the chest definition is impressive. It's off I, the hook. <laughs> I, I'm distracted. You're distracting me with your... <laughs> well, now he's not blushing. Uh, not at all. I guess he's, like, he's like covering himself. He's like, stop looking at me. <laughs> Well, we do like to say here in D.C. that we have Pride 365. Yeah. So uh, and really that just represents the, the fact that many of us uh, today uh, are fortunate to be able to be out and proud. Um, we try to say every day of the, of the year uh, or we encourage folks to uh, be out um, as much as possible. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we are unfortunately have been faced with a lot of setbacks over the last few years in regards to um, the rights um, of our LGBTQ plus community. So the work that we do at Capital Pride Alliance not just involves uh, the big celebrations we do in June and the various other Pride events we support um, in the month of May, uh, but it's really about supporting and highlighting and spotlighting uh, the organizations that do work um, to support um, our community 
community um, every day of the year. Um, DC is such a, a fortunate place. We tend to be one of the more progressive communities in the country, um, and that's something that we want to keep pushing for um, to ensure that um, all of our residents feel safe uh, and um, welcomed. Absolutely. So, again, we definitely know about celebrations, um, but you ha have a new campaign, right? I mean, well, I'm I've, confused for a sec. Okay. I've heard you say Capital Pride, and then in the area, in the air, it's DC Pride, and then nationally, there's Pride. Is everything? Is there like a national Pride organization, or is it, are they just different communities with similar cause? Yeah, we're actually part of an international association called Interpride. And uh, each community basically has their own pride organization uh, that um, organizes, whether it be a traditional pride parade or other sort of events that really provide a safe space for people to be out um, and to network and to learn and to also to advocate and also be activists. Does that, is it like a local chapter then? Is that what, or? Um, sort, of, sort um, of, like here in DC, uh, you know, we, uh, we call ourselves Capital Pride Alliance uh, to represent that we partner with so many other organizations as well as businesses in our community to um, um, to do the work that is needed here in the community. It's got to be. It's, it seems like it, it's any event organiza organizing seems very difficult. But then when you and then when you have another social cause and I'm not trying to make it sound small, it's it's it very, very important. That's just got to add to it when you have actually people working against you. Oh my, oh my gosh, yes. Uh, I mean, the, everyone in our, um, even beyond the LGBTQ plus, plus community, I, I think is very sensitive these days. Um, it's such a, for me, in terms of my lifetime, a very unique experience um, that I've never experienced um, since um, growing up back in Indiana. <laughs> and, uh, um, but we have such great people in this community. And you had mentioned um, our new campaign this year, uh, which is um, hashtag still we. Um, and it's still we advocate, still we love, still we celebrate, still we dance, still we struggle, still we fight. And it really acknowledges the accomplishments that have um, happened over the years, but it also acknowledges the setbacks. Um, and despite all of that, still we love, still we struggle, still we persevere, still we thrive. Oh, that's interesting. I had a different take, but a very positive one, but to hear that it makes, but I think that's uh, I'm creative director in advertising, so seeing a campaign come to life and having my own interpretation of it, mm -hmm. I think it's really cool to, that I was able to walk away with something else. Like it, but it meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. That's okay. really that's wonderful. You have, and then again, getting prepping prepping for the the episode, um, I saw that you have different organizations within the organization, so that you have microcosms maybe of people with unique backgrounds or different backgrounds like you, I saw they had Asian uh, and Pacific Island Pacific mm -hmm. which I lived in Hawaii for a long time so it was close to my heart um, and then Latino and then you have trans like you're really it not siloing I would I would imagine it's a, an embracing and I'll wait for you to tell me but I see it as like it's an embracing of different cultures and different influences mm -hmm. because everyone's struggle is different yeah, um, we, um, Capital Pride Alliance, we, um, we program Trans Pride um, as well as um, API, which is Asian and Pacific Islander Pride. And then we partner with a variety of other organizations. Um, API is a lot easier than to say Asian yes, it is. and Pacific Islander. Uh, and, uh, but we have other Especially when you drink for a living. You have to, you have to <laughs> for, forgive my ignorance. So API. Yes. Is that dealing with? Um, it's just acknowledging um, different um, demographics of our community. So Asian and Pacific Islander um, individuals, they have unique experience, um, same as our trans community, our youth community. Um, we also have Senior Pride, which is called Silver Pride. Um, and all of wow. these events are different. So they're um, an opportunity to create another space where folks can feel hopefully comfortable and safe um, to be themselves, to learn. Um, and then we all come together um, to celebrate um, at the Capital Pride celebration for the annual um, Pride Parade and festival and concert. When we were talking about like s seniors, I it was interesting. It was something. I mean, I have a lot of gay men in my life. I always joke. I have so many gay boyfriends. Um, I have more gay boyfriends than, than not. I always have. I make these jokes. Uh, but anyway, I and, and a lot of my friends are getting older or older than I am. I never thought about what it would mean to be a gay person aging I mean like what are that what it, how is I mean getting older being alone is hard no matter what um, but then to add on another layer of complexity or um, 
unfortunate isolation, loss mm -hmm. of family, which is all unfortunately, again, a very true thing that happens um, to even think that they're, the support not being there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, our senior um, community is one that um, um, is one of our newer, most marginalized communities. Uh, many folks, um, as they age, sometimes have to go back into the closet, for example, um, whether because of the nursing homes not having the, the, um, the staff um, equipped um, to support, um, or it's because they don't have family um, around to, um, to support them as well. So. And often those spaces are religious-based, mm -hmm. which might ha what often, unfortunately, comes with a bias mm -hmm. opinion or a bias treatment. Uh huh. Those are the things like just talk. About, it's it's we're all just sta standing here shaking our heads, thinking it's 2020 for God's sakes. It is 2020, um, but we have, there's, there's there's hope. Um, we our young generation is amazing. The, the stuff that they're willing and able to do at their age that it, I never felt. I can't, couldn't have imagined feeling comfortable um, at um, at their age. Uh, I think should give us all hope that, uh, that good times are will be ahead of us again. Yes, yes, it is again. It's 2020. November 2020 is a very important month, and we all have to vote wisely because it's very, very important. Not just for any. It, it's important for all of us. Right. It's important still, for all of hashtag us. Hashtag still we vote. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's great. That's absolutely. <laughs> I think it's just really important. I, I think that's where I, I got back to like how to I try to figure out a way to open the show that feels there's some context and, and you coming on. I, what I really wanted to talk about is the unity that it's not just you, you as an organization are bringing in these different spaces, going into the cultural differences, acknowledging these different needs, which absolutely is amazing. But I also think it's as anyone, anyone who walks the planet should, I mean, like just embrace one another. I think of things that I've learned, I've learned so much, learning so much. There's just, I think of things in broader categories and the attention that you, you were able to specialize in and, and identify the different subsets within the broader category and still identify the attention deficit that needs to, to address. It's not just a broad stroke. It's not just homosexual or right. trans or what, whatever it is. It's we're specializing as any other industry, and it, there's special needs that should be addressed. And we can all celebrate together as one, but individually, there, is, there are important issues and sensitivities that you may not be aware of. Yeah. I, mean, I certainly wasn't. Well, yeah, we, we, all three of us here, I'm sorry, all, I mean, although you and I are both from the Midwest, we all have been, you have a completely different upbringing than, say, my Latin father, German mother upbringing that I had, um, I would assume, although. Save assumption. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little different. East Coast you look a little suburban different, kids with a, a West Indian background. Yeah. Different sensitivities mm -hmm. and awarenesses than certainly your experiences would have provided. Yeah. And, and yours. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're all made up of multiple layers, and there's not just one layer that shapes our experience. Absolutely. And that's really what. Uh, we're like Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Onions. <laughs> Ogres are like onions. <laughs> <laughs> the green people have to be. Ogres should be represented as well. You're right. You're right. No, but you got the, the short ogres, the part-time ogres, the tall ogres, the fat ogres. Ogres that become donkeys. Didn't they switch in one of the Shrek movies? I, I, I missed think that so. one. I, don't know. I you think saw so. Your <laughs> you get all the B, you get all the B, all the B real. <laughs> um, speaking of. Uh, making mistakes or drinking too much. How about we have a cocktail? Do you drink? I do on occasion, yes. What do you drink? Um, sometimes water. Sometimes, See, I got uh, water. <laughs> um, sometimes a glass of wine. Uh, What's wine? Okay. That's water. What you got? That's water. Uh, someone told me that, you know, you might be interested in vodka sodas. Vodka sodas are a, a very uh, common um, and easy uh, drink. Yes. I am more, a, I'm more of a gin and tonic guy than a vodka soda guy. And I really am selfish and like to drink about me. So <laughs> I decided that um, I've been in the stores and I've been seeing cold brew is all over the place. There's, uh, there's cold brew whiskey, there's sky cold brew vodka and I'm like, okay, that's great, and I still like, I like a gin and tonic, and I like coffee and tonic. So I said, you know what, let me move towards, but wait, vodka, gin, Dwayne's more important, no, wait, what are we gonna do? I mean, Gina, 
Who G are you Gina, today? I, I'm so confused about who I am and my identity. Anyway, I decided on what do I love about gin so much, and it's the aromatics that are brought forward. So I decided to go with something, and which aromatics that I want to highlight. I really wanted something more citrus forward, because I always squeeze a lime into my gin and tonic, or a lemon into my vodka sodas. So I went with Sky Citrus, which is a blend of lemon and lime, some cold coffee, and then I'm gonna top with soda. And I just feel like I've poured this in here already. Well, I appreciate the attention to detail. Yes, it's and, always. Uh, so we're gonna I always enjoy trying something new. A little soda. So did you infuse that gin with the cold coffee then? Oh, or we the cold pressed coffee, I mean? Vodka. Vodka. So no, I've just added cold coffee, cold pressed coffee. Yes. A little a half ounce of coffee to about an ounce and a half of vodka. We're gonna top with soda and then garnish with a little orange twist. There we go. Over ice. Well, this is perfect. I haven't had enough coffee yet today to either. See? <laughs> it's a twofer then. <laughs> Your body won't know whether to relax This is selfishly or... our drink. There we go. Because still we imbibe. Pretty, there pretty, we go. pretty. Hashtag still we imbibe. That was nice. Nice way of pulling it all together, Dwayne. You're all right. Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I love the orange peel. Salute. Cheers. It's so cute in these little glasses. Ooh, that's a little dangerous. Oh, yeah. Why am I? I'm tasting some vanilla. Is that the coffee? So probably the coffee. The coffee with the alcohol together mm -hmm. could bring out that vanilla. I mean, vanilla is one of those default familiar mm -hmm. flavors, but with the coffee being sweetened, if you will, mm -hmm. remember you have the orange peel as well is going to give you some perceived sweetness, ah. and that coffee is going to go straight to vanilla. Some people might get caramel on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the citrus is going to pull that back as well. I mean, it's all full circle. I like that. Yeah, I mean, when he put like Low coffee sugar. and orange, like citrus, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I usually follow. Um, the good thing is, is um, <laughs> Dwayne, who's playing Gina today, uh, <laughs> um, they all, I, it's, it often like I'm presented with some flavor profiles that kind of make me scratch my head, but I always know I'm in good hands, so. <laughs> never a doubt, never These a doubt. Hands. Great job. Great job. My soft. I now have a new favorite drink. Italian hands. <laughs> so again, you got the cold coffee and you just, the cold, I took coffee, coffee. cold coffee, vodka, soda. Three ingredients, anybody, everybody can make them at home. The vodka I chose today because I, I like the aromatics and push from gin. I used Sky Citrus, which is bringing in citrus flavors, primarily lemon, lime, do you think and sparkling soda. You, do you think you could do this with like just brewed coffee? Because it always changes the, the flavor profiles, like brewed versus cold press. Use coffee. Okay. Okay. Just make sure the coffee is cold. Cool. Yeah. Okay. We'll bring enough, and it will change if you use brewed versus cold press. Um, and use that based on your preferences. Gotcha. Um, just don't use hot coffee because you'll get more dilution and it'll taste watered down. Yeah. Well, then it makes it sessionable. Maybe. And then I don't you'll know. Drink twice as fast. <laughs> <laughs> that never seems to be a problem. Always drink responsibly. Always, always drink responsibility. Responsibility. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, I, how many have I had today? Have we served drink? responsibly yet? I don't know. I'm going to order a bottle of responsibly so I can drink it. <laughs> <laughs> but what you will do is you're going to head over to designateddrinker.show. I keep telling you that's not correct. What is it's it? It's designateddrinker.show. Show. Good Lord, you'd think I'd get it right by now. But you're going to go over there and you're going to get all the tips and tricks and how to's. No, we're going to put how to's, <laughs> tricks, and tips. <laughs> Uh, for this recipe and all the other recipes. Um, so, and you'll have all the listed ingredients. If you didn't catch any of it, don't worry, it'll be there. So when it does come to um, the celebrations and we were, when we were briefly speaking earlier, you were talking about the fact that one of the biggest misconceptions about the support you get from the cities, that how important it is to actually participate and be a part of these things because it raises so much money, correct? and allows for it to pay for itself. Is, am, I, am I incorrect in this? Well, yeah, our, the Pride Celebrations, um, I got involved in the organization in 2012. 
And I think what we've experienced, Pride celebrations around the world have experienced, where um, participation keeps growing and growing. Uh, here in the nation's capital, uh, we are uh, a, um, a destination Pride, so folks travel from all over to experience it, uh, which obviously it's, we view it as a way to spotlight our community. So we want everybody in the city to participate, and many do, yeah. uh, to put our best foot forward, uh, welcome all the travelers, but then also um, really allow our local community to, um, um, to be um, front and center. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's but I think it's important because it's important for a lot of reasons. Like I said, unity is important. We're only as strong as our weakest link, all those things. But I really think that um, supporting one another, especially during this time, that's mm -hmm. very difficult. If you can show support and be open, um, we're all better for it. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. In these past uh, toward the end of 2019, we went through and did many focus groups. Uh, really gauging people's um, excitement and passion and what the need or purpose of the Pride Parade is um, for them. And uh, it was, to me, it was very inspiring and um, empowering because that's really what everyone uh, expressed is that they love doing the Pride Parade because of the energy, the whether it be them just being together with um, other folks who um, are open and proud, or it's you know trying to get a message across. Um, the Pride Parade is a uh, um, you know started as a, a march um, in the streets to saying hey we we need to be um, welcome, safe, open, and proud, um, and uh, many still f um, have that opportunity to do that today. That's great. What do you think, since you've been there a minute now, mm -hmm. what's the biggest change you've seen? Hmm, in the events themselves or just in our community? I think in the, the community. I mean, there's mm -hmm. been some major changes. We've, to your point, we, we feel like we've, we've made some really great strides, but we've you know, slid back a bit, I would say, in our most recent mm -hmm. four years. Um, what what do you, what have you seen positive and or negative i mean what is the, what are you how do you feel that the organization itself has changed i would say one of the things that stands out for me over the uh you know the i guess about 8 years now mm -hmm. uh that i've, I've been involved um, specifically with capital pride alliance is just how different the um sort of this, I guess, the sense of community and the sense of purpose behind Pride has changed. You know, after the progress with the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and then marriage equality, many were questioning, oh, do we still need the Pride Parade? And we were getting, oh, media were reaching out and people were asking that question. And then it was almost like a whiplash um, to where, oh my gosh, you know, more and more hate crimes, um, um, repeals of progress that um, it just goes to show um, that um, we always have to be on our toes and always Absolutely. have to be vigilant, but also acknowledging that there's still much more work to do on our most marginalized communities, um, such as our trans women of color, um, our youth and our seniors, that um, um, we have to acknowledge um, and um, be a voice for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Would absolutely. you go so far as to say, because I've, in different marginalized communities, uh, the current state of events has given a boost to your efforts to make people, again, bond and join together, more so than even previous administrations where we were celebrating? Um, yeah, in different ways. I think, you know, there's the, uh, the struggle of sort of the right path. Uh, and I think as a pride organization, we try to um, appreciate and support um, sort of everyone's path to, um, to equality. And there's not just one um, solution. Uh, and I think it has brought folks um, together in a unique way. But it's also forced us to ask questions and to learn um, in terms of that question um, a little while ago is, you know, I've learned so much over these eight years and um, during this process you know, about some of my own biases, um, um, about some of the things I'm still passionate about, and um, some of the areas of our community that really still need more attention, so. From your personal perspective, uh, how would you evaluate the health of your movement? Um, I would say it is, um, Gosh, um, I would say it is bubbling, if that makes sense. Uh, I like it. In the sense of, uh, so my, not necessarily a health reference, but an, it's a very active reference. Uh, and it's bubbling in a lot of different directions. And I think 
I think we're in a turn to where we are beginning to more coalesce um, and sort of acknowledge that we need to be in this together um, and not bifurcate ourselves. Yeah, I think it's uh, to your point or what you felt like you were leaning towards. If you think about um, in the recent years, the amount of women who have run for like government space, local, city, you know, it, as well as state and, and well, and our presidents as well, our presidential race as well. It's funny how the, the, the trying time caused that, I believe really did cause that to happen, having more women in serving at the federal level. I mean, you have to applaud that. And it was that, oh shit, we gotta do something moment that mm -hmm. when things are threatened, um, do we all come together, unify, mm -hmm. stop breaking each other, each other down and realizing, you know, to your point, we all have biases. How do we come together? And, and again, oh, right back to unity. I started off right. You, 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 you doubt me. You doubt me. I saw it. I just watch and I learn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Still we learn. And still we learn. Um, obviously, this is a very important year. Still we vote. Um, and we encourage everyone to be very active in their communities, both locally um, as well as nationally. And we're capitalpride.org, capital yep. with an A. And uh, that can get you access to all the various um, so I opportunities. So DC Pride. Is that going to take me to a different organization or is that... All filtered back to um, the DC Pride is, um, we use that hashtag. So that's still you. Um, okay. It's still us, yeah. yeah. That's still us. Yes. Yeah. Hashtag. Yeah, we. we uh, still we. Still we. I'm part of we. Yeah. Are you? Absolutely. We still are. you. I, no, I want to be a we. Still you vote. Okay, I will. Well, and that's, I think, maybe, I'm not sure if this is what you were referring to, but that's the other kind of meaning behind our hashtag still we is we are still a community. Uh, despite all of this, we want everyone to feel a part of a community. That's and, where I, that's, that's kind I of, did. yeah, see, that's where I was circle. at. See, Absolutely. I have see. value. Sorry. Scary. Let's have another cocktail on that note. Thank you for coming, Ryan. Thank, Thank you, you for, for sharing everything me. and inspiring us all. Yes. The VOD And all the work that you do. Thank you again. Thank you. And it's all have pride 365. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a podcast media company dedicated to connecting people to intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Missing Link is a proud partner of Hearing Charities of America, a nonprofit organization that supports those who are deaf or hard of hearing. To learn more about HCOA or to find out about Missing Link's other podcasts, head over to missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company.